So if you've not seen Codility before, I'd recommend checking it out. It's a series of tests for programmers to see if they can actually do their job and recruiters use this site. Uh, recruiters can set up uh, tests for programmers uh, to see if they can program or not before they employ them. I've got 120 minutes for one task, but I think this is a simple one. Uh, I've actually got uh, my own IDE Eclipse ready uh, and I'll set up myself up a class. It's called binary gap, this test. So I just set up a binary gap task, about binary gap class. Uh, and I'll just make a main method. So you'll see how it works when I start the task. So let's go. Uh, I can skip the tour because I already know how it works. So here is the task. A binary gap with a positive integer n is in any maximum sequence of consecutive zeros that is surrounded by ones at both ends in the binary representation of n. For example, number 9 has a binary representation 1001 and contains a binary gap of length 2. The number 529 has this binary representation and contains two binary gaps, one of length 4 and one of length 3. Number 15 has no binary gaps. Number 32 has no binary gaps because it's, it's a series of zeros but no one on the end. So the first thing to do with all of these is, is to understand them really. Um, so I'm going to take the method and I'm going to do the job in Eclipse. Um, I should probably have done that before to save time. But um, so n equals one of four one. Oh, hang on. It, Given a positive integer n, return the length of its longest binary gap. The function would turn 0 if n doesn't contain a binary gap. For example, 1041 should return 5. Uh, I assume that's right. Because n has a binary representation, right, there's 5. So the longest binary gap is of length 5. Given n equals 32, should return 0. Write an efficient algorithm for the following assumptions. n in, is an integer within the range of 1 and a very large number. I just need to check that just to be safe. Um, that's the maximum Java integer value. Two one four seven four eight three six four seven. Okay, so we can use an integer. Now the thing about these tasks is you need to think of corner cases and also you need to be efficient. So I think this is an easy task. Um, I can get the string representation of n. Um, and I think I could get to binary okay I'm just gonna Google how to convert a Java into binary string I know that there's a method to binary string somewhere there is an easier way I know there is um, integer dot two string the number followed by the number base so that's what we want to use so I can say integer two string n two string b string I'm a system out print line b string and return zero gb solution nine so that should System up print line one zero zero one. Yeah. 
Okay, so the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to just loop through. I don't need to worry about efficiency with this because there's not going to be any exponential loop. Uh, I'm just going to loop through the string once. So for each character in the string, uh, for i equals naught, i is a and b string dot length i plus plus substring i comma just gonna system out print line c just to confirm i can't remember whether substring takes begin index and end index so i plus one so that should print one zero zero one going down I don't need that print anymore. I don't need that. Now if C equals one, then I'm either at the beginning or the end of a binary string. So I'm gonna make a Boolean value started. And I'm gonna set that to false. If C equals one, I'll say if started. I'm going to make a counter here. Uh, and if C equals one, it's max. I'm going to make a max count, which is zero, which is a value that we're going to return. If C equals one, if we had started because we've encountered a one before, then I'm going to say if counter is greater than max count, max count equals counter. And then whatever happens, we want to say we've started if we haven't already started, and we want to set counter to zero again. And the only other thing to do is if C equals, we know it's a binary string, so we know it's going to equal to zero, but I'm going to check anyway. Counter plus plus. So I just quickly check through the logic. So I start off with a counter and a max count is zero and started is false. If I encounter a one, if I started before, I'm going to say if the counter's higher than max count, max count equals counter. Otherwise, I'm going to set counter to, uh, yeah, that will save the counter into max count. And then because we've hit a one, uh, we'll say started. So if we can't start until we see a one, um, and then counter equals zero. So we reset the counter back to zero. If we see a zero, we'll add one onto the counter. And finally, we need to return max count. So nine is going to give us, I need to system out print the solution. Two, so that's what we want. The other examples we've got is five, two, nine will give us four. So five two nine. That seems to work. Uh, the number twenty will give us one. I'm going to test it with the solutions that it's given us. One, yep. Yeah. Number thirty two will give us zero. I'm pretty sure that this is is easy and it's going to work. There's zero. Uh, but let's try some corner cases. So I'm going to give it. Zero. We know actually we know n's an integer in the range of one to that other value. So I'm going to give it one zero. That's what we expect. I think that that is it. 
and I'm reasonably confident that that is it. Um, did I try 1041? We want to see five. Yeah. So that's my method. I'm going to submit this and see. First, we run some tests. We run some test cases on it. They worked successfully. So now I'm going to submit the task and see how I've done. Now it's running some additional test cases and I know it will do some corner cases. Corner cases are like unusual cases like um, minimum values and maximum values and depending on the test some unusual values that are likely to trip things up. And the other thing it will test me for is efficiency but I think I only went through that loop once so yeah, score 100%. Took me 10 minutes. Uh, it, these are the test cases. So it's done some large numbers. Um, see this large number with a load of zeros after it. And yeah, everything's good. 100% so that was an easy one but that was an easy task so I'll do some more difficult tasks moving forward so thanks for watching